On this edition of Motorcycle Experience, the pride of the OPP tackles Matt's racetrack. While on this season's ultimate ride, we pull over en route to our ultimate destination, Gaspé, Quebec. Then, during our Winging It segment, touring expert Ken Edick reviews the Passenger Manifest on his Honda Goldwing. And Shifting Gears editor Jen Martin takes a closer look at the bespoke motorcycle. All this and more as Motovan presents Motorcycle Experience. Hello and welcome to Motorcycle Experience, the voice of motorcyclists everywhere. I'm Dave Hatch and this week we're coming to you from Yamaha Motor Canada where we're shooting some upcoming features. As for our road test this week, let's kick off the show by sampling Harley Davidson's revised bagger, the Road Glide Special. If you've toured around a Harley Davidson dealership recently, then you know all about their recently touted Project Rushmore initiative. Thanks to that three-year-long customer survey, Harley says their slick bagger, the Road Glide Special, has received over 100 refinements, including small things like one-touch latches and more intuitive hand control switches, to big impressive items like a multi-function, 25-watt, color touchscreen boombox infotainment system, and Daymaker LED headlamp. Of course, Powering the Road Glide Special is Harley's air-cooled, high-output, twin-cam, 103 cubic inch V-twin with its six-speed overdrive transmission. But added to the secret sauce this year is a new linked ABS Brembo braking system, a revised handlebar, fairing, hard bags, fenders, wheels, everything you look at, something has been tweaked, trimmed, or breathed on, right down to the super low saddle. How low? Well, that perch now sits an impressive 695 millimeters, or 27.4 inches, off the pavement. A spec sheet factor loyal viewer Daryl Dunsby really likes. I don't know about you, Daryl. I know you own a Harley Davidson. Um, I really wanted to get you on this bike because it is such a beautiful machine. Gorgeous. When I saw it, saw it this morning, I, I looked at it and I was like, what is this? The, 2015 uh, Road Glide's back again. I was like, wow! Yeah. And, a, and a beautiful color to boot as well. The, the morning sun shining on the blue and the uh, new LED headlights. Is, I couldn't stop looking at it. Couldn't wait to fire it up. The engine, obviously the classic Harley V-Twin. Tell us what the riding experience was like from the motor. Did you, did you have enough torque? Did you have enough power? What was it like to move away slowly? Yeah, yeah this bike, the 103 engine, uh, plenty of power in every gear. Um, effortless power. Uh, it'd be great with the passenger as well. That it's not going to be short on any uh, torque. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, sixth gear works well. You know, the first five gears are great for around the highway and that. And then once you're at cruise, yeah, and you just put it in the six, and then it drops the RPM down. And that's where this bike gets its great fuel economy. Right. So, how did you like the sound? Well, the sound when you get on the throttle, it's it makes you want to change gears a whole bunch. You just, you just love to, to to hear the gears. Yeah. To hear the, the mufflers going as you as you switch gears. Now they've put a lot of work into the, uh, the, the hand grips, you know, last year they did a complete re overhaul on these yep. motorcycles with the Ross, uh, with the Rushmore project. Yep, project Rushmore. Um, how did you find, uh, you know, the, the activation of the clutch itself? Um, much more forgiving than before mm -hmm. and it's really helpful with a motorcycle of this size, especially when you're at a stop and you want to turn left or right. Um, it, since it's a little more forgiving, it, it, you're not going to have any issues engaging the clutch to get rolling again through a turn. Right. So it's, it definitely makes it a little easier for the rider, especially if you've got some, you know, full of luggage or a passenger on the back. Right. Now, Daryl, typically you're riding a night rod, and that goes back a few years in terms yep. of the model you have. They've done so much in the braking department since then. How did you find this for stopping? I found it very crisp and precise. Uh, when you grab the brakes, um, the linked brake system, you grab the front brake, if you're not using the back, it still keeps the back, the back uh, wheel lined up with the front. It's a very confident system with the link braking system. Right. So it's going to give the rider a more confident feel, drier, wet roads. Yeah. Um, and I know if you have to do a panic stop, I had to do one today, slow down. Uh, no issues at all. And you know that with the ABS system as a backup, that you're, it's going to give a rider quite a bit of confidence. So. so how did you like the cockpit layout, the wind protection that, that is now afforded to you? Just how did you like the overall layout of the bike? Very uh, crisp and clear and concise. The, the gauges are, are 
almost not, not a big, but the, the numbers are easy to read. So quick reference, so you don't have to keep your eyes uh, off the road for too long when you want to check your speed and your RPMs. And and the, the nav system is quite uh, easy to to observe as well. Yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time on the nav system today, but. Well, it's a big screen, yeah. right? Yeah, a lot of inf information there. You need your owner's manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So who would buy this bike? Who would you recommend it to? What's, what would this bike be good for? Um, this motorcycle, I would say, would be ideal for um, a weekend getaway. Mm -hmm. Maybe not driving away for a week. You could, but this is ideal for um, one or two people that want to go away for Friday, Saturday night somewhere, and they want to head up to the beach somewhere. you got enough luggage to, uh, enough space to carry your luggage. And the bike gets good fuel economy, probably about 300 kilometers uh, per tank, so you're gonna have good range with two people. Yeah. And just gets comfort. And plus, it, it looks cool, and it's a lot of fun. So, when you go back to, uh, when you ride back home today, what will you tell your buddies in terms of the experience of riding this bike? I'm gonna tell them to, uh, they might wanna trade in their current Harleys for a newer one, a Project Rushmore bike just because it's got a, a, a bunch more upgrades that are actually safer that will make a rider even better even if they're not even trying to be better it's, yeah. just, it's just a lot of more safer features on this motorcycle they've, they've really done a lot as far as listening to the customer and implementing all that information into their bikes for 2014 and 2015 such as this road glide yeah it's really interesting eh? like when you look at the bike at first from a distance you can't really see a whole lot of difference right you have to ride it to really you do you have, you have to First thing you'll probably notice is the headlight and you hop on the bike and you notice the bars, just the angle's a little bit user friendly, then you'll see a nav system and then and the gauges are a bit bigger and it's like, okay, something's different about this and you hop on it and it just works well. well. Solid. I'm so glad you had fun today. I'm grateful to be here. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate Thanks for it. helping us out again. Absolutely. My well pleasure. done. Hang in there, we've got plenty more experience still ahead. Next touring expert, Ken Edick doesn't wing it when it comes to his co-rider. While Norm Wells and I pull over midway through our third day in the Gas Bay region. Stay with us. Portions of this broadcast are brought to you by Harley Davidson, BMW Motorrad, and Honda Canada. Welcome back as Motovan presents the experience. I'm Dave Hatch and it's time now to get some touring advice from a former motorcycle instructor who knows a thing or two about going the distance. But before we do that, let's check in on this week's ultimate ride. Today, Norm and I are almost at Gaspé. So as you know, this season during our annual fall ride, we're in the province of Quebec exploring the scenic Gaspé Peninsula with our ultimate destination, the town of Gaspé and its famous Percé Rock marked out on the map. We started out on this adventure after picking out a couple of BMW K1600 GTs from Moto Vanier in Quebec City. After a couple of days of solid riding that found us crisscrossing through the peninsula's mountainous national park, we wound up in the small city of saint anne de -Mont. Today, after enjoying near perfect sunny and cool riding conditions since leaving Quebec City, the weather has suddenly made a turn for the worse as we make our final push for the town of Gaspé. So Norm, here we are in Grand Valais and uh, we are midway through day three of our Gaspé tour. And um, this morning we started out at saint anne des mont and I think it was about five degrees. They promised us it would stop raining, they promised us it would get warmer and the weatherman lied. Yes, he did. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's three degrees. It's gotten colder. The toque is back on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're here by yep. the coast with the uh, with a lovely breeze off the cold uh, seawater. Yeah, but I have to say the things we do for motorcycle experience, <laughs> despite the rain, despite the cold, it's been a spectacular ride this morning. I was blown away by what we saw and what we experienced this morning. It was fantastic. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, as we were riding, I was like, geez, this would be great in the summertime with sunshine and, and just warmth. But, uh, you know, it was very surprising to me, the landscape that we're seeing. I wasn't expecting that at all. The, the mountain coming down to the ocean with the little road going along the side of the, uh, the gulf here. And uh, I was expecting something a little bit flatter, but obviously not. 
No, and what was really amazing was this 132 that we're on heading east to Gaspé. The way the road has been built um, with just the, the sea is, you know, the St. Lawrence is right there on our left the whole way. No obstructed views, no houses between us. And uh, even those signs that we've seen where they've got the waves crashing over, possibly crashing over the, the highway, I could see that happening. Um, but just, oh, Fantastic, spectacular. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were talking earlier about, you know, because of the, what we're doing here, we end up having to go back and forth sometimes to, uh, to do That's some right. of the shots and, and filming that we're doing. And you get a totally different perspective coming the other way of, of exactly what you just saw coming, you know, northwards, going south, it's different. So yeah. if you have time, you know, ride the gas bay on the 132 this way and ride it back the other way and, and you'll have a whole different trip. Yeah, I've been, I have been thinking uh, several times along the way, you know, if I had to pick the top three areas to ride in Canada. I would have to definitely say our ride that we did from Vancouver to Calgary through the Rockies, spectacular. Uh, the Cabot Trail, well we know that's right up there. I would say this might be number three or, or at least our top three. I, I, I've really been pleased with what we've seen. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think normally we did choose the right time because we're after Labor Day mm -hmm. and normally you know, there's less traffic. We can see that. We just got unfortunate with the weather. Yep. But in about a week or so from now. Uh, can you imagine when the leaves turn, how beautiful this is gonna be? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we've got a full afternoon still ahead of us. We're about halfway now between uh, St. Anne de Mall to uh, Gaspé. And, uh, and hopefully this will break up and clear a little bit, maybe warm up a little bit, but it's still, I got a huge smile on my face. This has been a great adventure so far. Yeah, for sure. Push on. Onwards. Fantastic. Be sure to tune in next week to continue following along this, our 14th ultimate ride. Meanwhile, Honda Canada is celebrating the 40th anniversary of their iconic touring machine, the Goldwing. And as a tribute to that, we've been celebrating the art of touring all summer long with a segment we call Winging It. So Ken, this week on Winging It, we want to talk about the co-rider. And you know that person back there is important because on the new Goldwing, they've added a heated seat environment so that they can be just as comfortable as you are up front. That's right. I mean, you're, you're, you're a tag team on this and the co-rider has input and safety inputs and their enjoyment of the ride is, is just as important. So they're now moving those creature comforts to the back. Right. So yeah, the new one's heated seat, heated back. Um, it's, it's incredible what they're addressing on that aspect. Now, this is your personal uh, gold wing. How many kilometers you got? About 160,000. Oh, still working on it, huh? That's right, that's right. Um, but you have added an aftermarket saddle, and you were telling me earlier the reason for that was so that your co-rider could sit upright. Yeah, the ergonomics uh, from, from the original manufacturer were a little too sloped for a lot of the public. So a lot of the aftermarket seats address that issue, making it more upright, because they found the passengers were starting to slide a bit. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to design a bike, but then when you live in it, there's always room for improvement, no matter who it is. So that was a big improvement there for making the comfort long, long term. Living in it, you, you said to me earlier that you've also have the option now of adding armrests for your passenger? Yep, they're, they're on and off in about five minutes. I just don't have them on today. But they, they mount on here for the passenger to have somewhere to rest their forearms. Mm -hmm. And they swing out of the way for easy mount and dismount of the bike. Now what you do have today is I notice you've got different foot pegs yeah. for the co-rider. Just like uh, the rider every so often needs to change his foot position for the, for the long rides, they came up with this ingenious design for the passenger and that can all be put up with their foot. They don't right. have to reach down with their hand like I did, but it allows them now to just move their body position around for a little bit, a little change of uh, posture does a immense difference. And then I always suggest that you put them back down to the standard position when we come into traffic and they can just kick that back down and they end up with the original look floorboard to support their foot in the normal position. Right. While you were bending down there, I noticed you've got uh, volume control here. You guys are communicating with each other via CB? When you're on the upper plateaus, they add all the electronic toys. Uh, so GPS, intercom, stereo, you name it, it's got it. So there's no more yelling. We yeah. talk to each other civilly. And these ones have sensors on board that it doesn't necessarily need a press to talk to intercom. Mm -hmm. It just realizes you're talking and it suppresses the music. Very cool. And I guess lastly, uh, You've got these deflectors here. Uh, does that actually uh, allow you to flow air to your co-rider or deflect it away from your co-rider? You can aim them anywhere you want. They're sort of like the old school thought of uh, no draft windows that we used to have on cars you no longer see. Mm -hmm. But it takes the ergonomics of the way the, where the wind is flowing around the bike and aims them where you want them. 
It can be a plus or a minus depending on what the environment is that you're riding in that day. So you can channel cool air or warm air to yeah. your co-rider. And deflect the rain around if you're running into that too. It makes you a wider screen up front. Wow. Have you ever played with windscreen heights to, aftermarket to help your will passenger? Allow you, aftermarket will allow you a lot uh, to play with, but we've stuck with this one because now there is that adjustment from the factory mm -hmm. that allows that I might want to deflect that turbulence when you're on the interstate, but I want it down for a little more wind on the back roads. Man, I just, I just love the fact that you can customize this motorcycle, not only just for yourself, but also for your co-rider. It's very cool. They're very key to a good ride. Nice job. Thank you. Well done still ahead. Don't try to fit your bike, make your bike fit you. And round eight in the ultimate Yamaha challenge. Welcome back as Motovan presents the experience. I'm Dave Hatch and it's time now for this week's installment in the Yamaha ultimate challenge. This week, Anthony Mann is back and he's staring down challenge number Four times two, eight. All right, so this summer we're putting the riding skills of one OPP constable Anthony Mann to the test by putting him through a series of motorcycle riding challenges designed by Matt Fletcher at Yamaha Motor Canada. Matt hopes this friendly competition will show us how we can all become better riders when we practice our sport. All you need is some open pavement at a vacant parking lot, or in our case, a runway at a private airstrip. Okay, Anthony, welcome to Matt's racetrack. As you can see, we've laid out a course here of cones. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a three-leaf clover. Basically, you have to circle inside each one. Don't exit the circle. Don't knock over any cones. Piece of cake, right? We're gonna find out. Okay, any thoughts about uh, keys to success here for this one? Uh, feathering the clutch, um, Look on the throttle rear brake, body positioning, uh, squeezing the tank with my legs, and then looking uh, looking hard over my shoulder in the direction I want to go. Yeah, I think the key here is planting your chin on your shoulder. If you turn your head, you'll go where you're looking. So, yeah. yeah. All right, good luck. All right. Best of luck. Oh, Matt, I don't know. These are pretty tight little circles. Yeah, let's see how he does this time. He's been showing me up every other challenge, so we had to step it up in difficulty this time. The R3 is perfect for this challenge. You know, it's a really nimble little motorcycle, right? Yeah, it's a nice, tight, light package. It, uh, it should carve these circles up, no problem. Still doing well. He's feathering the clutch. He's turning his head. Well, the thing about Anthony is, you know what? He, he practices the sport of motorcycling. He practices it. No, that's a good thing. That's definitely something you need to do. Look at that. I really thought we made this difficult, but it doesn't appear that we did. <laughs> <laughs> we should have made the circles even smaller. Yeah. We even did a victory lap, rubbing yeah. it in our face. Nice. So you turned the three-leaf clover into a four-leaf clover. What was that, a victory lap? <laughs> I was getting dizzy. I got confused out there. <laughs> and that was great. And I, I, I think the key there, eh, you were turning your head. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, Anthony Mann is doing a great job. He easily handled Matt's mini road racing course. Now, I hope you were watching closely because that segment really was all about practicing your slow speed turning control. While keeping your eyes up and looking deep into the corner, you use the rear brake to control your speed, and then blip the throttle to keep your revs up for some trifical stability. And the clutch is feathered to control your forward momentum, not your throttle. And as always, this is a skill we highly recommend you practice early on in your riding season. And now that we've got you all fired up, Stay tuned because next, professional riding instructor Jen Martin takes a closer look at tweaking your motorcycle for a more enjoyable riding experience. Portions of this broadcast are brought to you by Harley Davidson, BMW Motorrad, and Honda Canada. 
Welcome back as Motovan presents the experience. I'm Dave Hatch, and now that we've got you ready to ride, we'll wrap up our show by paying a quick visit to the Toronto Motorcycle Show to see what you can do to tailor your ride. Joining me now is the Chief Riding Instructor at Georgian College in Barrie, Ontario, Jen Martin. So Jen, this week we're back at the Toronto Motorcycle Show in the Harley-Davidson booth. In fact, we're right in the Fit Shop, uh, their example of what you can deal with at the retail level. Right. Um, what are you looking for when you're talking about making a motorcycle fit you? Okay, so that triangle, we're looking at your handlebars, the connection there, uh, your seat, that connection, and then the feet, that connection as well, making sure that it fits you properly. Okay, and what we're trying to achieve is a straight back mm -hmm. um, and sort of a slight bend, as you said, where your weight is evenly distributed throughout the motorcycle. Why is that so important? Well, I mean, you want to be comfortable when you ride. So, I mean, there's so many people out there that are riding a motorcycle that they might feel is too big for them or not comfortable. And there's so many things that you can do to make it comfortable. It's especially when you come to a stop, you want to be able to put your foot down, reach the ground, um, and, and be secure. And it's all about safety and keeping yourself safe out there when you're riding, for sure. Right. So you don't want to be leaning too far forward because that's going to stress your lower back. You don't Correct. want to be leaning too far back. Uh, you don't want to have your knees all cramped up, no. right? Um, the neat thing about the Fit Shop is you can swap the bars, you can swap the saddles. Uh, tell me how what that experience was like, like customizing the bike to fit. I think it's excellent because, I mean, there's no excuse why the bike should not fit you once right. you're done with it. So there's so many things like, you know, switching out the handlebars, straight bars, curly bars, whatever whatever suits your fancy as well, uh, but making sure that um, your riding position is the best riding position for you so that you can steer when you're out there on the road, you're concentrating on what you should be concentrating and not worrying about, I'm not really comfortable on this bike. Right. That's a very important point. Uh, studies have proven that if you're comfortable on the motorcycle, you will be safer on the motorcycle, right? Because you're not thinking about, oh, my back really hurts or my knees are going to... Exactly. Right? You're concentrating on what you should be, which is what's out there on the road and what do you need to do. Right. And the beauty of uh, the Fit Shop is, uh, that I think is great, is you can switch things out and you can... Uh, didn't you say something about... Uh, Windscreens? Yeah. Yeah, they have a new program now at the dealer level where you can actually borrow different windscreens. Yeah. They'll bolt them to your bike or saddles um, and you just take them off for a couple of hours and just try them out. Just again, there's nothing worse than having a windscreen too short or too tall where you can't see through it or it's buffeting you and your head is bouncing around. You can even try out windscreens. Which is great. You don't have to make the commitment up front. You can try different ones and find the one that's best for you. Right. So there, it's not just all about comfort for comfort's sake, it's really comfort for safety's sake. Absolutely, yes. Right? Some great advice there. Good. Thanks, Jen. Well, that's it for this week's program, folks. We're all out of time, but till the next time we get together, keep your feet on the pegs, your right hand cranked. Bye for now. <laughs>